This morning, a small Minneapolis business is getting set to reopen after making a speedy recovery following a fire which investigators call suspicious. Slice is the first black-owned pizzeria in the city. They are crediting the quick relaunch of the generosity of strangers. Marielle Mose spoke with these uh, new business owners, and she is live at Slice this morning. Hi, Al. Hey Jason, good morning. So just to give you some perspective of where Slice is, it's on a triangular island that sits between Hennepin Avenue and Central Avenue in the heart of Northeast Minneapolis. And the two owners are best friends that met in high school in St. Paul and their dream finally was able to come true and they opened their doors on October 2nd after navigating the delays of the pandemic. But just two weeks after the grand opening, they were forced to close their doors again because of a fire. Take a look at cell phone video of this fire that happened at 9 a.m. on October 19th. It was fortunately put out very quickly, enough to remain contained outside, but it still caused more than $11,000 worth of damage to the exterior of the building and their outdoor refrigerator. The owners believe this is arson, and the Minneapolis Fire Department tell us in their investigation that they believe it's suspicious. The pizzeria, pizzeria had to close down, which put them and four newly hired employees temporarily out of business. Right away, they said they had neighbors calling, asking how to donate and to help repair the building so they put up a GoFundMe account and within five days the community raised twenty five thousand dollars for them that kind of like really fed our fires and that kind of really just showed like hey we have the community support and whatever happened or however that happened as far as the arson of the fire is a very very you know outlier to what the community really feels about us and to you know all of our you know people who have been our customers you know fans of our shop uh, really did so that kind of really just got us you know refocused and realigned and since 25 grand is more than double of what the damages were, the two owners tell me that they were able to back pay all of their employees who were temporarily out of business for a month, or out of a job for a month, rather. And then they're using the rest of the money to reinvest in this space, this sort of mini plaza in front of the building here. They're going to put permanent benches and tables to be ready for next summer when they have more foot traffic. And they hope to make this a community space for local artists to sell their work, play music, that sort of thing. Of thing. So should be a good time next summer when more people are out and about buying by the slice. But if you want to come support them tomorrow for their re grand opening, that starts at noon until supplies last. Yeah. How long do you think that's going to be, Al? <laughs> Right. They said that when they had their two weeks of being open, they were selling out on a regular basis. Correct. So I think 300 slices is going to go pretty quickly. <laughs> exactly. Good for them. And what a great <laughs> response, too. Thanks, Al. Soon. Minnesota Vikings cross the midway point of the season Sunday in Baltimore. And for our Meet the Expert segment this week, we did some research. Yeah, some literary research. We're hitting the books at the mm. library. And of course we are because Ravens football name is inspired by Baltimore writer Edgar Allen. Alan Poe and his famous poem. Here's Shayla. As our beloved Minnesota Vikings take on the Baltimore Ravens, we thought it would be the perfect time to visit the poetry floor of the Hennepin County Library. In fact, I'm right here with librarian Russ Johnson, and you're going to tell us a little bit today about a famous raven and a famous author behind the raven. Edgar Allan Poe, uh, you probably have heard of him. He was an American writer born in 1809. Uh, he was a writer of short stories. He was a poet. He's a literary critic. Um, you also probably have heard of him because he wrote The Raven, uh, published that in 1845, um, and it made him an instant household name. He was one of the first authors who uh, was someone who made his living as a writer at that time. He was not someone who had another job. He just uh, was able to support himself just barely on his writing. But he was uh, someone who was given credit for inventing the detective genre. Uh, he was a trailblazer in science fiction. I think almost every kid in an English class at some point, quote the raven nevermore. It lives on years after his death. What is it about that piece that has survived the test of time and its popularity, you believe? You know, that's a, that's a really good question. I mean, I think it's, it's so mysterious. Um, it is, uh, you know, it, it tells a tale of uh, uh, a kind of a, a distraught lover um, who is, is mourning the loss of his love, Lenore, and he's visited in his room by a mysterious raven who uh, cryptically repeats the word nevermore. <laughs> Eight 
It's mm -hmm. time for our pick. What is your pick for the winner between the Vikings and the Ravens, Russ? Well, sure. So, like you might know, in Norse mythology and maybe from the Marvel movies, the Vikings' main god was Odin. You might not know that Odin was also known as the Raven King. And this Sunday, I predict that the Vikings are going to rule over the Ravens just like Odin did. Wow. I'm going to drop that knowledge, though. Yeah. Oh, Raven that's going to be a real hit at your game watching oh, party this yeah. weekend for sure. Thanks, Russ and Shayla, for the history lesson. Mm -hmm. uh, Russ says he's very confident there you go. the Vikings are yeah. going to win. Just like Odin. Yeah. All right. There you go. Look at us. I, I we are know, so I smart. Don't even know what to say about this one. <laughs> We've taken our Meet the Expert to a new level this morning for sure. <laughs>